for more on last night's debate, I'm joined by Caitlin Huey Burns of Real Clear Politics. The Washington Post, Caitlin, called this quite simply a dark turn for <laughs> presidential politics. You and I were discussing the, the tension that felt palpable, really, the nation over uh, last night. So first then to the issue du jour, the tape, and how it would be addressed. Hillary Clinton largely seemed to pass at least mm -hmm. at, at a first attempt offered to her to discuss it. Mm -hmm. uh, Donald Trump dismissed it as mere locker room talk, although I do want to point out there's an NBC News survey monkey poll out today that now say 63% of likely voters believe that Donald Trump simply does not respect women. Mm -hmm. Was his answer then last night enough to dissuade that? No. Uh, he did not exactly apologize last night, as a lot of his advisors even wanted him to do, sounding you know, more humble and contrite and expressing to the American people that he was, in fact, a changed man, that the campaign did, in fact, change him. Change him. Gave no indication of that last night, instead consistently dismissing it as simply locker room talk. And so if you uh, were someone who was uh, offended by those statements and all the other ones that Donald Trump has made, that, I think, dug him further into a hole. And then on top of that, uh, he went after Clinton on Bill Clinton's infidelities, of course, having uh, those women in the room, hosting that press conference or press availability, at least with those women ahead of time to really kind of rile her up and get under her skin. Um, that tells you everything you need to know, I think, about how Donald Trump is approaching these next 30 days, appealing to his base of support, making no indication that he is going to to expand or wants to expand his base of support. Um, and I think Clinton took, uh, uh, the approach that she took was to not take that bait, to quickly move on and list the laundry list of things uh, that Donald Trump has done uh, in the past at least year um, and really just not engaging him in that. And I think um, Democrats watching that were kind of relieved about that. And Republicans, as we've talked about before, this is not a track that they wanted Donald Trump yeah. to go down. They know that it's been litigated and that it has backfired in public in elections before. Well, well, so and to that end, we know now that one in four Republican voters say they don't want Donald Trump as their nominee. So it's not really just about broadening the appeal. It's also about shoring up exactly. a rather faulty base. Also, mm -hmm. with regard then to the leadership, we saw them really leaving the campaign in mass in the 24 hours prior to, mm -hmm. to this debate. And I, I wonder if, as there are even questions today, if, if it will continue. If it doesn't speak to some greater idea, this leadership skittish about the idea uh, of a President Trump, perhaps, that would see the power of the presidency, it would seem as he see, as we heard him in 2005, capturing mm -hmm. the idea of celebrity, that somehow, power means getting to do whatever you want. And I think that was a, the most, one of the most significant parts of that tape was I can get away with this because I'm famous. I think that has really large implications when you're running for uh, president, of course. I think, you know, you've seen uh, the, the Trump campaign hemorrhaging Republican support over the past 48 hours at least. Others were looking to this debate as a sign that maybe he could uh, kind of right the ship, so to speak. I don't think that he gave them uh, necessarily confidence of that, although there were some Republicans who thought that he did do well in this debate. Um, going on the attack against Clinton on a variety of issues that he missed in the first debate, the problem is the cloud over this debate was uh, the, the videotape, the audio tape. And so it's this is still the conversation today because he didn't put it behind behind him. I also think Republicans who are leaving the, 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 the candidate in mass were also looking at the idea that he was losing support before all of this. He was trailing in battleground states. He was trailing nationally. And when we're talking about why now, why this moment, I think that was certainly part of the calculation. Do you think then uh, if perhaps Hillary Clinton last night was looking uh, to parry thrusts, to play it perhaps a bit defensive, to rise above, as she said, uh, while Donald Trump looked to double down here, really looked to, re to, to, to prosecute a case anew. Did both candidates go to bed last night, wake up this morning thinking, I did what I had to do last night? I think they both did. I mean, their goals, of course, were very different. I think one of the interesting things about this debate was another big piece of news over the weekend was the leaks of emails regarding uh, Hillary Clinton and this saying one thing in public, one thing in private. For Donald Trump, that is an, a thing that perfectly captures 
his argument against her. And a lot of uh, people who support him or support a change candidate, their argument against her, that she is uh, dishonest, that she's not trustworthy, that all of these things we've seen in polling over and over again. The problem, of course, is, and this is also reflective of the entire campaign, that faced with those opportunities, uh, Trump is not able to seize them exactly how Republicans would have wanted because he's also facing his own uh, stumbles of his own making. And so while I do think that he did go after her on that last night, and I think he did have a, a pretty um, quick and effective argument when she went to the, the Lincoln route. Um, again, I think a lot of this is overshadowed by the tape. And also, a lot of Republicans are wondering what else is out there. Uh, and so even if this stopped the bleeding for now, which I'm not convinced that it did, uh, there's still that anxiousness about what else is out there. Again, that next debate, a week from Wednesday, and it does seem forever from here <laughs> to then. Caitlin Hewitt-Burns exactly. of Real Clear Politics, as always. We appreciate the insights. Thank you.